Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome. If you're just joining us, we'd love to see where in the world you're joining from. So if you could put uh, your city or your country in the chat, we'd love to see where you're coming from. We'll get started in just a minute. We're going to let other folks join. Oh, we've got somebody from Flagstaff, somebody from Georgia. Awesome. If you're just joining, oh, somebody from Debrecen in Hungary. Awesome. North Carolina. Someone from Savannah. Somebody from Maryland. Awesome. Someone from England. Great. If you're just joining us, we're going to get started in just a moment. We still have a lot of folks joining the chat. Um, and we would love it if you would go ahead and put where you're joining us from. Oh, somebody from Auckland, New Zealand. That's great. Welcome. Thank you for waking up so early in the morning. Or maybe you're still awake at night. Oh, another person from New Zealand. Wow. I'm very impressed with how late slash early you have you're awake. I can't believe you're awake right now. Thank you for joining. We're excited to have you. If you're just joining us, we'd love to see where you're coming from. If you could put it in the chat and we'll get started in just a minute. Great. Okay. I think we'll go ahead and get it started. Uh, my name is Rachel Gordon. I'm the Director of Enrollment Management here at ISEP. Um, and I will be here manning the chat and the Q&A. So as our presenters, we're telling you all about our application process. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put them into the Q&A section and we'll make sure they get answered. And with that, I will turn it over to Amanda to introduce herself. Yeah, hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our ISEP application workshop. My name is Amanda Ewart, and I'm the ISEP Student Services Officer for the UK, Ireland, and Oceania. So I'm very excited to be working with many of you. And I'll go ahead and turn it over to my colleague, Jackie, to introduce herself now. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Jackie Domenico. I'm the Student Services Officer for the United States, specifically programs in the Midwest and West. And I'm also the Student Services Officer for Canada. So it's great to have you. Great, thank you, Jackie. So I'll go ahead and get us started on our presentation today. So a little bit about what we'll cover in today's presentation, how to submit an ISEP application, some strategies for a competitive application and who to contact for application help. I also suggest that you stay to the end of our presentation today as we will have time for some breakout sessions at the end of the presentation. You can meet and ask questions to the student services officer that works in your region of interest. So we'll go ahead and get started. So before we get started with our ISEP application process, a little bit about ISEP and our mission is that we are a nonprofit organization and our mission is to make the life-changing experience of studying, interning, and volunteering abroad accessible and affordable for everyone. ISEP programs are immersive and authentic and focus on intercultural exchange and engagement with your host communities to help you truly live like a local. Great, so how it works, we have two different types of program models. So for ISEP Direct, students pay a specific program fee, which includes flexible housing and meal options. And your placement is guaranteed as long as you meet the minimum academic requirements. And our other type of program model is ISEP Exchange. So with ISEP Exchange, you pay your home institution's tuition, housing, and meal fees. And you're able to rank up to 10 sites on your ISEP application. And placement depends on your program rankings and space available. And just a quick note that we can't guarantee any specific program placement on ISEP Exchange. And we'll talk a little bit more about how to make a competitive ISEP Exchange application throughout this presentation. Great, so how to get started. If you have not already, you can create an account at icepstudyabroad.org. 
And I also encourage you to meet with your on-campus ISEP coordinator. They'll be your main point of contact about your ISEP application on campus, and they can answer any campus-specific questions and will approve your ISEP application. And you also have an ISEP student services officer who I encourage you to meet with as well. And they can answer one-on-one -on -one questions about programs, courses, and the ISEP application. So now we'll go ahead with a poll so we can learn a little bit more about you all. So you see the question and some answers pop up. So where are you in the application process? So you'll be able to select your answer choice below. So we'll give it a few more seconds, let you all answer so we can review the results together. Okay. Right. Yeah, it looks like about half of you haven't started yet, which means you're in the right place to learn all about the application process. And some of you are working on it, some are almost done, perfect, great. Next question that we have for you is, where do you want to study? A lot of interest in Europe. Give it a few other seconds for folks to get their answers in. Okay. Awesome. Looks like a lot of interest in Europe and then a good amount of interest in Asia. Um, and then a few folks interested in Africa, the Middle East, or Latin America, or the U.S. Great. All right. Perfect. Great. That was great learning a little bit more about you all and where you're at in the application process. So now we'll start to review how to submit an ISEP application. Great, so to start with some step-by-step -step instructions, you can see here on this photo of our ISEP homepage, you can click the log in button at the top right corner, and that will take you to the login page. So if you already have an account, you can log in with your email and password, as you can see on the left side of the screen. And if you don't have an account, you can click that sign up button. So you'll be able to sign up with your email, your name, a little bit more information. Make sure you add in your home university as well, and you'll be able to create your ISEP account via email. Great. So once you have that ISEP account, you'll see your ISEP dashboard. So every time you log into your ISEP account, this will be what you see. And so from your dashboard, you can access your application and contact information of the team that's here to support you throughout the ISEP application process. So you'll see that the first contact on your dashboard is your on-campus ISEP coordinator, and they'll be able to help you with any on-campus questions you might have. And right below that, you'll see the second contact is your ISEP student services officer, who's here to support you throughout the ISEP application process and any other questions you might have. And if you click application, on the left-hand side under enrollment, you'll be able to either start your application or request permission to begin. Great, so you can see here, number one, you'll be able to click into your application. And so there are two options. You can see number two, it says start application. You'll be able to click that button and start your application. And in number three, you can see the button for request permission. Your home university may require that you request permission to begin an ISEP application. So if that's the case, you can click request permission to send that request to your home university coordinator so they can accept it for you to go ahead and get started on your application. So getting started with your application. So once your application has been started, you can click edit in that top left box right there. You can also click view your remaining steps and click the drop down arrow to see what's left to do before you can submit your ISEP application. And we also have a YouTube video on how to start an ISEP application. So I recommend you take a look at that video too if you're interested. 
All right, so adding a new program to your application. So once you click into your application and click edit, you can add new programs by selecting search for more programs and add to application. You can see search for more programs highlighted there in that red box. So you can click on that to take it to our ISET program finder. And we also have another short YouTube video on how to add a program to your program list, which I recommend as well. So using the ISEP program finder, so you can use the ISEP program finder to filter by your field of study, term of interest, and region or country of interest. And you can also use the more filters button as well to filter by a few more advanced parameters, um, such as ISEP exchange, ISEP direct, and a few other filters as well. And so you can use those to find some programs that would be a best fit for you you're welcome to play around with it to see what types of programs you get. And we do have another YouTube video that I suggest you take a look at on how to use our ISEP program finder to learn all the ways that the program finder can help you find your perfect fit. All right, so adding a new program to your application, step one, after you search your parameters and hit apply filters, you can select one of the sites from the search results. So you can see here, we have one of our programs highlighted in this red box. You'll be able to click on that study in Buenos Aires name, and it'll take you to our ISEP program page. Yep, and so on this page, you would be able to add it to your ISEP application. So once you click on the program, you'll arrive to the university's program page. And these program pages has a lot of different different information about the university and the academics as well. And if you scroll to the bottom, you'll be able to select an available term and you'll see two different buttons. You'll see add to application, which will let you add it directly to your ISEP application and then also save for later. And save for later works similarly to an Amazon wish list. So you can add this program to your ISEP wish list. And if you'd like, you can always go back and add it to your ISEP application later. Okay, thanks, Amanda. So now we're gonna talk about the different tabs within the application. So the first tab is um, the program list. So um, once you've added a program, like Amanda explained to your ISEP application, it will appear in the programs list tab in your application. You'll be able to change your program rankings by selecting the move up and move down arrows. Um, we always ask that you please consider the chance of placement next to each program, especially for ISEP exchange, and then adjust accordingly. Um, you can also select any desired add-ons for the programs, and once you are all done, you can click Save to move on. The next tab is the Academics tab. Once you've created a program list, you'll be able to add the field or fields of study um, in which you plan to take courses in while abroad. You can list several fields of study by clicking Add Another. Um, it's always helpful to add the subjects you plan to take courses in. Um, we recommend that you don't add like 10 fields of study. We only recommend, you know, the one, two, or three fields of study that you want to take courses in. Um, if you do not see an area of study that you need in this section um, within the university, um, that means that it's not available with this program. So you might want to talk with your student services officer to determine if the program is actually a good fit for you. Um, you'll also be asked to list the academic level and the language, and once you are done, you can click Save and Continue. Now we're going to talk about the document section of the application. Um, you'll need a couple of documents in order to submit your application. So the first one is the official transcript from your home university. You will need it to be official, and you can request a copy and then upload it. If you have any questions about how to get an official transcript, um, please either ask your SSO or a better option would be to ask your home coordinator. The next is an academic reference. You'll enter your professor's email and it will send them a form where they can submit their letter of recommendation. Again, this will automatically go to your professor's email. Um, you can request from multiple professors, but only one needs to respond for you to submit your application. 
Um, for ICEP Direct students only, so if you are thinking about applying for an ICEP Direct program, you do not need to submit an academic reference. If you are doing an ICEP Exchange program, you must submit an academic reference. Um, if you're applying for a program where the primary language is different than the primary language at your home university, you may also be prompted to, to submit a language evaluation completed by a professor and a writing sample. Um, if you have a language test like the TOEFL or IELTS, we'll get to that um, in a second. And then the last little tidbit is um, please check each university's program page under the academic conditions section and the special application instruction section. Um, there might be more information about any additional documents that you might need to add in your application. If there are additional documents, you'll need to upload them in the additional document section and then you can click save and continue. So the next section is the eligibility section. In this section, you'll add your academic level. Um, and for US students, you will add your US GPA. Your language, um, um, your language levels will populate here from the language evaluation from the documents tab if you have submitted one. Um, if you have a language test like a TOEFL or IELTS, then you can add your scores here and then upload the official documentation. This could also mean that you don't need to add a language evaluation from the previous tab. Most schools accept the IELTS or TOEFL. Um, once your scores are entered, the application will inform you if you are eligible or not for the programs. And you can also do that by clicking um, where it says verify your eligibility. If you're not eligible for a program, it will tell you the reason why. And if you have any questions, just reach out to your SSO. Once you're done, you can click save and continue. So the next section is the biography section. In this section, you'll just need to add information such as your address. Um, we might need to send you visa paperwork as well as your passport information. If you don't have a passport when applying, such as reasons like this is the first time you're applying for a passport or you're waiting for a renewal, um, please select no so that you can submit your application. Um, and once you do get your passport, please send that to your SSO so they can add it to your application. If you have not applied for a passport yet, you should do it as soon as possible in order to prevent delays in getting a visa. Um, again, with the spring 2025 um, program start, you don't have a lot of time to apply for visas. So it's really important that if you haven't done so, please apply for your passport. The last section or last tab of the application is the other section. This is where you can submit anything else we will need to know when making a placement. This includes special needs um, that can include extra time on exams, special medications, or support services that you receive from your home institution. Um, it's always best to submit this information here so we can make sure that your host university will be able to support you. It's a little bit difficult if we find out um, about such things after we've already given you a placement, and we just want to make sure that the placement that you received is the best fit for you. So lastly, in order to submit and get approval, you need to do a couple of steps. So the first step is, you know, complete the ISIF application and then hit the submit button. It's the one circled in yellow. Um, once you have hit the submit button, you'll be asked to pay the ISIP application fee in your invoices tab. Um, once you have done both of those, your application will go to your home, universe, um, home university coordinator for approval, and they'll just review, and once they approved, your application will be submitted. Um, however, we do ask that you submit your application and pay the ISIP application fee with enough time for your home university coordinator to review and approve of it before the priority deadline. A priority deadline is September 15th. However, your home university may have an earlier deadline before September 15th by which you need to submit your ISIP application. So please make sure you're following your home university's um, deadlines accordingly. And if you don't know if they have an earlier deadline, always email them just to be sure. So now we're gonna talk about strategies for a competitive application. So, 
As Amanda mentioned in the beginning, specific programs on ISP exchange are not guaranteed. So it's important to really um, know about our chances of placement. Chances of placement range from excellent to most competitive. Um, we always recommend listing three to five programs you'll be excited to attend. Um, you can list up to 10 programs per term. Um, and if you are applying for a most competitive program, please, please have it as your number one. Um, that is our policy. Um, if you, you should aim to have at least one to two programs in your application with a good or excellent um, chance of placement. Um, but again, um, please talk with your SSO if you have any questions about programs, especially chance of placement. Um, if you're that person that wants to just read it on your own, we do have a guide on our website that describes the chance of placement process as well as our placement process. Um, once again, if you're applying for an ISEP Direct program, your chances are guaranteed. Um, all students will receive one placement and specific placements, again, are not guaranteed on exchange. So it's really important to consider other options um, aside from your top choice of program. So making a good list or a competitive ISEP um, exchange application is a flexible one. So we do encourage you to add as many programs as you're interested in and will meet your academic needs. Um, you know, diversify your program list to have more options available for us to place you on. But please remember that you can be placed anywhere on your list. So please take the time to research the locations you'll be interested and willing to travel to, as well as willing to attend the university. If it's if it's something that you find that you're not going to be interested in, please don't apply for it. Um, if you find a university that you love and you absolutely see yourself attending and it's offered on ISEP Direct, please speak with your home university coordinator to see if you are allowed to do that program and if it's a good fit. Um, we encourage students to use the course catalogs to get a good idea about what might be taught um, during your intended term. However, please know that some countries don't release um, earlier term and the courses that are available this early. So if you have any questions, just ask your SSO. Um, we also have ISIP scholarships and resources to um, fund your study abroad as you're budgeting. So check those out. And as Amanda said earlier, you can save your programs that you're interested in and they will stay at the bottom of your student portal until you're ready to add or remove them. And lastly, we've been talking about student services officers such as myself and Amanda. So who do you contact for help? So these are our student services officers and these are the regions that we work with. So Rachel Brown works with anyone who's interested in going to Asia. Um, Amanda, as she said in the beginning, works with students who are interested in going to the UK, Ireland and Oceania. Um, Kyo Amani is working with anyone who's interested in Franco Europe, um, the Netherlands, Africa, and the Middle East. Kira works with students who are interested in studying in Spain and Latin America. Um, Grace works with students who are interested in Central and Southern Europe. Um, Gretchen works with students who are interested in Northern Europe as well as the United States. And myself, I work with the students who are interested in the U.S. and Canada. So now we're just going to do some breakout sessions. Great. Thanks, Jackie. Um, so we will, um, if you have additional questions, you'll be able to ask them directly to your SSO in the breakout session, and I'll um, have each of them put their links in. Um, so if you're interested in programs in Asia, you'll go to Rachel Brown's room. Rachel, do you mind putting your link in the chat? Thank you. So if you're interested in programs in Asia, you can head there. Yep, and the recording will be sent out. Yes. Yeah. Next, if you're interested in programs in the United Kingdom, Ireland, or Australia, New Zealand, or Fiji, you'll go to Amanda's room. Amanda, can you put your link in? Great. Thank you. We'll let Amanda head out. Next, if you're interested in programs in France, Belgium, Switzerland, the Netherlands, Africa or the Middle East, you will go with Kiamani. Q, do you mind putting your link in the chat? Great, thank you. If you're interested in programs in Spain or Latin America, you will go with Kira. Kira's link is right there. 
Awesome. If you are interested in programs in Germany, Austria, Poland, Italy, Greece, Turkey, Hungary, uh, you'll go with Grace. And Grace's link is right there. And finally, if you are interested in programs in the United States, Northern Europe, or Canada, you will go with Gretchen. Gretchen, can you put your link in the chat? Great. All right. That is it for us. If you have any difficulty, does, if, does anybody need help getting to their room? You can just put in the chat which room you're looking for and I can send you the code again. Jackie, you can head out, thanks. Anybody need help getting to their room? Esther, Madison, do you need help getting to your breakout room? Hey, Madison, do you need any help getting to your room? Madison, do you need help getting to your room? No, I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. We're going to end the webinar then. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye.